arguing constructively when it comes to certain themes in Brave New World. You guys, everybody's got a Chromebook. Your warm-up is online. Everything's hyperlinked today. Today's class was about being given scaffolded instruction that will eventually lead them to a future class where they will be able to do a whole class Socratic seminar, all student facilitated. Be able to have an academic discussion as a whole entire group about the text. We're going to start by warming up your own brain to figure out what side you are on when it comes to certain themes in the book. So it's more than agree, disagree. Please don't be afraid to put whether you strongly agree or strongly disagree. What if you're in like in between? Ooh, what if you have to pick a side? Come on, force yourself. We study Brave New World because they can relate to the technology part very easily. The language is very challenging, but if I can find, you know, different ends, this is one of the ends, is examining what technology does to humanity. We want to hear from everybody today. We're building to the ending towards, towards more towards the end of class where you will be debating and having a moral conversation. Um, about genetics, embryos, babies. Okay. Up until now, what we've been doing to prepare for these kinds of this moral reasoning conversation is we have conversations in general. We are not afraid of student talk here. From day one, having to share what you wrote in your journal. Um, from day one, understanding that we are going to get to the point where we're having whole class discussions. Miss Anastasia, can you read six? Human beings can be programmed to certain types of behavior to achieve stability within a society. So everybody reread it to yourself. The Common Core is asking students to look at all different types of nonfiction texts. And part of being able to examine all kinds of texts is can you actually have a conversation about the text? Like, can you start there? Can you actually talk and listen? And I do, what I appreciate in the Common Core is the, is the emphasis on listening and speaking. I feel like there is just more attention being paid to a person can demonstrate mastery in an area like this because they can re-say what someone else said. They can paraphrase. I start first with how many people had trouble with the prompt itself? Anastasia, Zaria, Chris. How many? Oh, whoosh, whoosh. Okay, but let's then talk about the prompt. Let's clarify. Human beings can be programmed to certain types of behavior to achieve stability within a society. Remember in Brave New World, community, identity, stability, and you make connections to those words. Somebody take a stab at what they think this might mean, if they had to paraphrase it. I think it means that you just have to adjust what's going on around him, like your surroundings, like because you want to be like the outsider or be different for everyone. Does that make better sense to folks that were really struggling? April, you want to add? Humans are programmed to think one way in order, like to behave one way in order to fit in society, basically. Okay. What I'm teaching in my class is communication. I want my students to be able to communicate in multiple forms. I want them to be able to articulate themselves orally. I want them to be able to write well. And when they read, I want them to make connections with what they're reading. So we're warmed up. Go ahead and shut computers for now. After the warm-up and after the discussion, the students then watched film clips. And we watch film clips in this case, of students that from before, because I think that it is important for my students now to see the work of others that came before them. You will be taking notes. We can't watch film clips without annotating somehow. And in your writer's notebook, can you just put brainstorm of norms? That's it. When you take notes, what do you notice about student behavior? Like, what do you notice that they're doing well? Where do you notice that you might do the same, do the same behavior? Where do you notice that it didn't go so well, if, the, if you see something? Okay. This is my period for class, and the Socratic seminar officially begins now. For me, going through the feedback and highlighting it, not only said they had good presentations, what made their presentations from judges is saying basically their personal experiences made it engaging to include their content in their presentation, which they found like they were very passionate about. Being able to, to, to use footage like in that legacy style is important because that to me is my students, the other English language learners that are articulating themselves very well on film and they, they know that it's possible. Being able to show student work is so much more powerful than me direct lecturing on anything. That's where we're going today, this type of a conversation. We're gonna do a quick brainstorm. I'm gonna capture the data. 
I'm going to use Padlet so that we can create a class list across all three senior classes. We're going to look at norms for discussion. So what did you notice? I see the, the student trying to give advice to the future coming seniors. Did you listen? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Seen a lot of eye contact. Mm. And that's like, um, I don't know, eye contact, you know, if I'm talking and I see someone paying attention, you know, and I, and I feel their eyes on me. I mean, that, that means they're engaged and then they actually want to listen to what I have to say. Mr. Jabron. Uh, everyone to turn to speak and then cut nobody off. I, like, no, I didn't feel like they, what they had to say was bigger than someone else. What did it mean to you to be able to see people that you knew up on film? You can be <laughs> it made me feel comfortable. It made me feel like, okay, if my friends could do it, then I could do it. Or, like, basically, like, my friends were engaging in this conversation, so I could be able to engage, too. We were ready at that point. We A lot of prep work to get there so that they could actually have the conversation. I actually choose the groups ahead of time because I want to make sure that there's a balance, that my um, long-term English language learners, that there is, that there's just balance. I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to speak. So it's not just about language ability. I'm looking at personality. I'm looking at gender balance. You are going to start with a quick write. The prompt is, what if you could screen embryos for diseases before they became babies. So there's that's one of the questions. What if you had the power to choose the traits your baby would have? Would you use that power? What I love is that even a simple like reasoning why still makes you right as a student. You still become a part of that conversation. And as a teacher and in my walk around, I'm particularly noting my English learners and what they're saying because those are the kids I'm going to think, you know what, if I brought what they're saying as one of the complexities, when I do that part of it, that kid feels a little bit more special. What they said mattered enough, and so now the teacher introduces it to everybody else. All right, are you ready? Yes. All right, go ahead. We don't have the power to choose. Only God does. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And if you just going to be what's going to be. I, I agree and disagree with you because, like, if we had that, you know, power, because then people would abuse it, you know? People would make perfect babies every time. As the facilitator of all of this, my, my job is to kind of, what do I, what am I hearing? Because part of the, the rounds of moral reasoning conversations is that you throw some type of a complexity in there, a wrench, something that, that jars the thinking. So here goes. You have two. They are twins. You got that much so far? You have one that has something, some type of a disability, some type of a disease, something that'll just make that child wheelchair bound forever. Okay. Then you have another one that's perfectly healthy. Here's the wrench, though. If you were to screen the disabilities, like get rid of this disability here, that means that you're also saying no to this one. You got to take that one away, too? This one goes to Oh, man. You have a choice to make. You have to choose if you're going to accept both. Or neither. Or keep neither. Part of it is is teaching the students. You can you want to have your perspective and you want to be able to name it and defend it and and, and, and and sit with it. And But then that doesn't mean that you don't listen to other perspectives. So part of introducing a wrench is to give them, well, here's this other layer, though, that we may or may not have thought about. I wouldn't want a kid to go through life like, like, like suffering, like saying, like, hooked up to like a machine and a wheelchair all night. But like, if they were just to a wheelchair, they could still do 